Hi guys, this is one you don't really need to know, but I'm getting started because uh, many of you ask questions about it and it makes sense of some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about. So this is uh, the particle model and explains what we know about matter. Um, I'm not going to go very far with it, I'm going to give you some background and you can always chase up some more information if you need to. I'm not sure I might get the full screen up for that one. There you go. Um, so, what's the matter? So everything's matter, you know, everything you eat, the air you breathe in, food you're wearing, you know, the car you're driving with your mum and dad, the um, petrol you put in it, the desk you sit at, the computer, everything is what we call matter. So matter can be living or it can be non-living. And everything is made up of this stuff called matter. And matter, in turn, is made up of atoms. And so we talked about atoms in uh, the previous video I was making for you which you won't be watching in sequence, so why? So that, I don't know. Anyway, um, matter can be solid, liquid or gas, depending on how much energy is in, in it. And so that means how far apart these atoms then can move from each other. So matter is made up, or atoms are made up of these three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So here we have a model. This is um, a shell model based on the work of Niels Bohr. We don't really see this as how atoms look anymore, but it's a good model to work with. So in the centre here, the centre is called the nucleus. The nucleus of the atom contains neutrons. It's, whoops, where my pointer go? There we go. Uh, these n things here, and protons, the p ones. And outside that, we have these blue balls, and the blue bits are electrons. And they float, they orbit around that nucleus. Um, the nucleus has an overall positive charge. And these guys are all negative charges, so they get attracted to that positive charge. I'm going too far already. You don't need that until year eight, probably. That's okay. Um, and again, this is stuff you probably don't really need to know just yet, but it sort of will answer some questions that many of you may be asking. So an atom is made up of these three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we essentially know three things about each of them. We know lots of other stuff too, but we know these three really important things. Protons and neutrons are said to have one atomic mass unit. Now, an atomic mass unit doesn't weigh very much. So you can see here, one atomic mass unit equals 1.66054 times 10 to the minus 27. So, and then we put 27 um, zeros on the end and move that decimal point 27 places to the right. So we're talking about a really small number right? um, of a kilogram, I should say, and put the kilogram in there, did I? So they don't weigh much. Electrons, weigh 0 0.00054 of an atomic mass unit. So they, they weigh not very much of something that doesn't weigh very much. So electrons have a little bit of mass, but so little, it's amazing. Um, we find the neutrons and protons in the nucleus, as we saw with our diagram before, and then these electrons orbit around the outside of the nucleus. The protons are positively charged, so they give the nucleus a positive charge, and the um, neutrons have no charge at all, and the, orb, uh, the uh, orbiting electrons are negatively charged. So let's go back up for a minute. So we've got 11 positive charges in here, and we find 11 negative charges. So 11 positive charges will attract 11 negative charges. A little bit of extra information. So what are protons, neutrons, and electrons made up of? I'm glad you asked. A whole lot of other really weird things. You would reckon that um, these guys write science fiction. This could be Game of Thrones, all this sort of stuff. So they're made up of quarks, and quarks can be up, down, bottom, top, strange, and charm. Mm. Leptons, electron, electron neutrino, muon, muon neutrino, tau, tau neutrino. 12 types of gauge bosons and the Higgs boson. So there's all sorts of really interesting stuff that's even smaller than electrons. Right? This is weird. You'll probably never go there with much of this until maybe you do some year 12 chemistry and physics. But there's always someone who asks, so what makes them up? So there you are. These are the things that we believe, well, we've made up the names, but these are the things we've discovered through scientific research that exist within protons, neutrons, and electrons to give them their characteristics. And the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons you give an atom determines what it can do. And we'll talk more of that in the future. But I thought those who want to ask the questions, here's a few little answers for you. And hopefully that helps. We'll probably end up with you asking me more questions. <sighs>